guys, we have a lot to cover. After this mega quake hit Kamchatka, magnitude 8.8, .8, now the massive, massive aftershocks with over 60 earthquakes over magnitude 5 are migrating. Volcanoes are acting up and erupting and way, way more consequences of this earthquake guys it's absolutely crazy july 30th 2025 local time magnitude 8.8 .8 rocked the seafloor east of the petropavlovsk kamchatsky region peninsula making it the largest earthquake since japan's 2011 tohoku disaster and among the top largest earthquakes ever instrumentally recorded so it wasn't just a single dot on the map the usgs has done a modeling and it shows that the quake and that's crazy guys has ruptured a fault zone that is roughly 500 kilometers roughly 350 miles long and 150 kilometers wide so over 120 miles wide can you imagine this this is almost if you drive through the full length of like Austria or Germany, this is really, really long. So this rupture that has happened is caused by the massive Pacific plate that is diving beneath the North American plate. And it's one of the fastest subduction zones on earth. Subduction zones are already scary, but that is really, really scary. And the region, you see the, the modeling here on that map, the region had been shaking for 10 days now, over 60 earthquakes with magnitude 5 plus and leading up to the main shock, magnitude 8.8. .8, that is absolutely crazy, but it also had a 7.4 as a foreshock. Can you imagine this? A 7.4 is a foreshock? Absolutely scary because once you're hit by a 7.4, you think this is it. And then it was 8.0 .0, and then the USGS really upgraded it to 8.8 .8. and it didn't stop there guys dozens of aftershocks are following including magnitude 6.9 6.3 many many aftershocks and they're migrating i'll tell you about that in a second so the area where this is happening is part of the kuril kamchatka subduction zone this is how it's called it has unfortunately a long history of mega quakes mega thrust earthquakes including a magnitude 9.0 absolutely crazy in 1952 and that occurred just 25 miles away from the current location so the seismic history matters because this tectonic movement is moving around 80 millimeters a year roughly like three inches a year so the region after the 1952 earthquake, the region had built up over six meters of strain. You're taking six large steps of strain since 1952. And that is now the USGS says partially released, not fully released. And you see this map here, it shows the past earthquakes along this Kuril Kanchatka trench and the red star is the current epicenter. Larger circles, larger earthquakes, as always. So this super violent earthquake is the sixth strongest earthquake that has occurred on our planet in modern times, guys. This is massively significant. That's why it is so important to watch what's happening now. After the quake, it's not over. I mean, we know We've all been through the night with a tsunami warning. The quake has triggered a tsunami that has spread across the Pacific, thankfully without causing any direct casualties, but definitely did damage because the epicenter was located roughly 100 miles east of the capital of the ter territory of this peninsula, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. The depth was can still be considered shallow, roughly 25 miles. 
and the Pacific plate sinks under the local Okhotsk microplate, basically an extension of the more famous North American plate, right? Many say Pacific plate underneath North American plate, but we have that microplate there too. And in addition, this area is hosting multiple volcanoes, like subduction zones always do. Pacific Ring of Fire. We've discussed this. If you're interested in that, check out my other videos. So this exact subduction has produced two of the 10 most violent earthquakes ever recorded in modern times. The 8.8 .8 and the 9.0 in the 50s. We spoke about this. Uh, interesting is how long this earthquake lasted, guys. It lasted a total of 240 seconds. That's about four minutes. That is long. That is really, really long. That is really scary. During that time, this, this fracture has opened up and has enlarged, has progressively spread southwest. Lots of landslides happening. And then in less than 10 minutes later, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center has issued a tsunami warning for almost all countries along the Pacific Ring of Fire, along the Pacific Ocean, with a particular concerns for the coast of Kamchatka, Alaska, Hawaii, and Japan, which are potentially from this region most exposed, and they got that tsunami. So, the tsunami has formed a progressively spread throughout the Pacific. Of course, most affected area was the Kamchatka Peninsula, the Kuril Islands. Waves have reached heights of more than five meters, 16 feet, and have also managed to penetrate inland for almost a mile. Some buildings in the Severokulisk port in the northern coral islands have suffered some significant damage but no injuries or casualties thankfully which is the most important news that we can can spread so far and then in the following hours that tsunami has re reached the coasts of japan hawaii california and most of south america thankfully everyone has evacuated in a timely manner you've seen the pictures in hawaii Roads were clogged, people were seeking higher ground. On average, the waves were a few tens of centimeters high, with only a few local that exceeded the 2 to 2.5 meter peak, so around uh, 6 7 feet. So, the main earthquake again has triggered a large seismic sequence consisting of over 125 replicas of magnitude 5 or more. 6.0, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, 6.9. That's aftershocks, not foreshocks. We just talked about the foreshocks. And what's a little bit scary is that the most intense replay of the series had the same intensity as this catastrophic earthquake in Irpinia in 1980, but we're on a completely different scale. As many of you will remember on July 20th, this very area of this peninsula was already hit by this violent 7.4. And many of the most violent earthquakes of the last century were actually preceded in the days or months prior to the big one. The problem is that we only know how to label them after the big one hit, because I think many thought that the 7.4 was the main shock. We can only label them from behind when everything is over. Despite a lot of progress in seismic monitoring, there is still no signal to tell whether an earthquake is a foreshock of a larger event or not. And now the aftershocks, the strong earthquakes are moving southwest. The epicenters are moving along the Kamchatka Trench. You see this here in the map. So the earth in this affected sea region off the east coast of this Siberian peninsula is still 
reeling and we still see strong earthquakes with magnitudes also in the range of six with their epicenters shifting further southwest at this 350 mile long section of the Kuril Kamchatka trench that is now affected and why is it shifting and what is the conclusion that we can draw from this so these shifts are indicating that there are aftershocks or that this amount of aftershocks they're not the classic aftershocks that are occurring in the same section of the fault zone where the main earthquake occurred it's rather that this main shock the 8.8 .8, has triggered basically a cascade or a domino effect that is rippling through this fault line it's leading to the release of stress in other areas of the same fault line so it can be assumed that large parts of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench, which is in total over 1800 miles long and up to seven miles deep, that's a monster, that the full length is under stress that will sooner or later lead to strong earthquakes. And you remember at the beginning, I said part of it has released stress. So what does that mean? We could see more, unfortunately. The Kuril Kamchatka Trench is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. North of the trench, the plate boundary bends to the southeast where it merges with the Aleutian Trench. There's also a bend in the south of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench, where it mer merges into the Japan Trench near Hokkaido. We've seen earthquakes there recently in the higher ranges. Strong earthquakes, yes, guys, they occur repeatedly at these plate boundaries. And this will continue to be the case, but we could see stronger ones, more of that. The shake map that you see here shows that the quakes along this sea trench, this deep sea trench that we just talked about, um, are migrating over the course of the week. The yellow quakes are the oldest ones. So it can be seen that there were already several significant earthquakes along the Pacific boundary before the events occurred near Kamchatka. But that tells us that the magnitude 8.8 .8 was not the trigger for these quakes because we had so many foreshocks. Probably it was the magnitude 7.4 that happened on July 20th that could have triggered everything. So the map shows two areas along the deep sea trenches of the Northwest Pacific where no earthquakes have occurred in recent days. So seismic gaps may exist here that then are particularly vulnerable to strong earthquakes because they're not releasing any stress. Let's talk about the volcanoes. Of course, this strong repeated shaking can have an effect of the volcanoes because it can make rocks brittle, get away from magma to come to the surface. So. Klyuchevskoy on Kamchatka has responded to the strong earthquake, has demonstrated a significant increase in its eruptive activity. We've already talked about the volcano in the recent weeks, it has shown strombolian activity without triggering anything major, but strong ash eruptions but that has changed after the earthquake because then all of a sudden volcanic ash was detected at high altitudes of roughly 4.5 miles and then they detected that something else was happening a strong thermal anomaly so is magma rising towards the top such high levels of thermal radiation are normally only caused if there is a large amount of magma trying to come to the surface is coming to the surface this could be an alarming sign for an eruption 
And then in the latest Sentinel satellite image that they did from this very remote area, it did reveal an elongated heat signature along the eastern flank of the volcano, which could have been a lava flow happening there already. And this activity started to increase roughly three hours, two to three hours after the earthquake. So all the volcanoes within like a seven, 800 mile radius could be affected from this strong quake. There's warning, warnings out that came out today for two volcanoes on the Kamchatka Peninsula that have increased their activity after the earthquake. That is, we just talked about it. Kliochevskoy, but also Shivaluk. Shivaluk has been in the news recently. I've reported about this. Yesterday, Shivaluk started spewing out eruptions, spewing out ash up to three miles up in the air. Shivaluk, though, they kind of classify it as continuously active. Kliochevskoy is sporadically active. But this increased activity, many scientists think it's related to the earthquake. Since I mentioned that in the last 24 hours, the earthquakes start moving southwest along the Kuril Kanchatka Trench, they're approaching um, the Kuril Islands and the Kuril Island of Paramushir, where there's another volcano, the Ebeko volcano. And that one has been unusually quiet in the recent month. So let's wait and see if that guy wakes up again. I mean, the, the Kuril Islands are a volcanic arc along a subduction zone, right? These volcanoes are nothing out of the ordinary. Remote, lots of volcanoes, barely explored. So, an eruption could probably come as a surprise. I'll keep you updated about this significant event, guys. Um, if you liked what you see and if you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, guys, buy me a coffee. Link is in the description to my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. If you want to learn more about me and my private life, become a monthly supporting member, click the join button. Thank you for your supers. Thank you for your birthday wishes. Thank you to everyone. I had a very nice day. And of course, I spent it with earthquakes and volcanoes as well, partially, but had a nice dinner and spent time with the horses and the doggies. So thanks for that, guys. You take care. I see you in the next one. And maybe I see you in a second if you click one of these end screens here. See you. Bye bye.